Hey, what's up, guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of A Nation United Rock Flag and Eagle. Our Team USA Road to Glory series. It's not really a Road to Glory, it's just more of a regular franchise, but you get the point. In this episode, we find ourselves in the second round after dispatching of the Washington Capitals in five games. We take on the New Jersey Devils, who also pulled off an upset in the first round. I mean, I don't know if it was really an upset against Washington. I would consider it an upset, though. They beat the New York Rangers, and I am excited to see uh, what you know what, what lies in store for us in this episode. This team has caught fire ever since our trade deadline moves. The acquisition of Dylan Larkin, who has been killing it so far. I have made a couple of changes, though. We have re-added Joel Farabee to this team, and Ryan Fitzgerald has been called up the fourth line of Wood. Uh, where is he? I don't remember. Blake Coleman. Sorry. Sorry, Blake. Sorry, I couldn't remember. Uh, yeah, the addition of Wood, Coleman, and Kevin LeBanc didn't exactly work out too well for us. And just in general, I mean, the top line was okay, but we were absolutely carried to this point by our second line, and by our goaltending, Ottinger was good. He wasn't great, but he was good, and that was enough to get the job done. Defensively, we still have some question marks. Grizzly and Casey Fitzgerald, we'll see what they can do. And Connor Carrick was pretty damn good in the first round. Overall, I'm feeling okay. I like our chances, but any time we are doing very well, and I end an episode and then look to continue, we seem to struggle in that next episode. So I am just a little bit concerned... Uh, let's go ahead and go WHL forwards for one week. And let's take a look at what we are up against. What does this Devils team look like at this stage of franchise mode? Let's find out. Oh yeah, that little chestnut. <laughs> you know, I forgot that uh, that is... Wow, okay. That's, that's interesting. I forgot that we traded Ryan Donato to New Jersey. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Oh, you know how this is going to go, don't you? Anytime I have traded away any player, ne nearly every player that I've ever traded away as I dropped my controller. Hi, Claude Giroux. How you doing? Let me go find that controller. It didn't turn off, surprisingly. Anytime I have traded away somebody, they always come back to haunt me if we face them in the playoffs. And Ryan Donato had four points. What was it, a seven-game series, I believe it said? Indeed it was. So Ryan Donato had four points in that first round. Of course, I wanted to keep him. I gave him every opportunity to stay. It didn't really work out. Larkin's been great on this team. He was New Jersey's leading scorer. But this concerns me, and he's also not the only former member of our team on the Devils right now. Claude Giroux still kicking around at 35 years old. He had three points in the first round. And Daniel Sprong is the other member of that top line on the right-hand side. Second line, Vladislav Nemesnikov. Four points in the first round. Centered by Sam Reinhart. And Jeremy Bracco, the other former member of this team. Three points in the playoffs thus far. But as you can see... He's coming off of a career year. That's the Jeremy Bracco I thought we might get on our team. It never quite happened. A great season for him, though, with Nemesnikov and Reinhardt. The third line, we have Nick Kerdiles, Ryan McLeod, and Morgan Klimchuk. Fourth line of Patrick Berglund, Kevin Hayes, and Zemgus Gergensen. So it is a very well-rounded team with some offensive firepower, particularly in that top six, of course. Defensively... It's not as strong, no real, I mean, flat out, I mean, a couple of fringe second line guys, no real superstar defensemen, uh, but we've lost to teams with worse defensive cores than this. It's Mark Edward Vlasic and Neil Pionk, Marcus Nudivara and Carl Alsner, Frederick Clayson with Brendan Dillon. The goaltender is... 34-year-old, 88 overall, Sergei Bobrovsky, who, in fact, posted a 9.50 save percentage in that first round and nearly lost. That series went to seven healthy scratches, Nate Schmidt and Yoni Tamela. Yeah. Do I feel any more confident? Or do I feel less confident? Do I feel confident at all? <laughs> I'm not sure. Like I said, we have been on an amazing run over the past two months of the season. But just, I I don't know what to expect here now. They have a great goaltender. 
Their defense is a little bit weak, which is probably a reason why their goaltender is so good. And they have former players of our squad on their team. All the indicators seem to seem to point towards this being a little bit more of a struggle than what I was hoping for. But that's what you get in the second round of the playoffs. Let's get this series underway. Can, okay, can the Blue Jackets help calm me down here? Because I'm a little bit nervous, I can admit. I'm nervous, I'm shaking. Oh boy, come on. First period of game one, and that doesn't really help necessarily. <laughs> Ryan Paling gets the opening goal under two minutes in, only for Ryan McLeod and Ryan Donato to score. It's 2-1 New Jersey at the end of the opening 20 minutes. Second period... Joel Farabee, though, he's back in the lineup, and he has tied this game. A shot from way outside, and we're all tied up. 23 shots to 16 in their favor. That is huge for Joel Farabee to get back into the lineup and to get on the board early. And we sent him down, of course, just trying out a number of different things. Gave him a chance on the third line at the start of the year, and he didn't really quite work out. Let's not delay anymore. Third period of game one. Let's do this. Early power play chance for the Devils is killed off. We have one of our own. Can we take advantage of it? It's an extended power play that we can't capitalize on. We have another one, though, and Brock Besser Casey Middlestad adds another one 44 seconds later. Two quick goals for the Blue Jackets. Will that be enough? Six minutes to go in regulation and off the back of a strong third period from our top line. Maybe Jesus. Okay. Ooh, Jeremy Bracco, Jeremy, Jeremy Bracco, you are, you cannot do that to me. Holy hell, that scared the hell out of me. Brock Besser, kind of struggled this year, didn't have a great first round. He gets what was the go-ahead goal at the time, Middlestot gets the eventual game winner. Jeremy Bracco, though, uh, absolutely scares the hell out of me. Both the Ottawa Bracco scoring in this game. But we walk away with the victory. Zach Wierenski, the first star of the game with a three-assist night. Two points for Farabee and the game-winning goal for Casey Middlestott. Now, I am intrigued to see the penalties. It was a high-sticking minor on Donato, a hooking minor on Berglund, and a cross-checking minor on Dillon. And we couldn't capitalize there. Or we could, eventually, on the uh, Brendan Dillon penalty. But... Oh boy, we take game one. Do I do I feel any better? Not really. <laughs> I think you can tell. I'm still a little bit nervous. But that's a strong way to start. Brock Besser gets on the board. Joel Farabee back in the lineup. He's on the board. And we take a 1-0 series lead. So far, so good in terms of defending home ice. But can we get the job done in game two? There are no lineup changes that need to be made. Let's get down to it. First period of game two. And that's the inverse of what happened last time, with the exception of the timing of the goals. Ryan Palin gets the opening goal of the game, six minutes and three seconds into it. Ryan freaking Donato scores again. Oh boy, but thankfully, Brady Kachuk with 1.10 to go in the period restores the one goal lead. It's 2-1 to one at the end of 20. They're out shooting us 11-9, to nine, but we have the lead. Second period, can we at the very least hold on to it? We can do that, and we can add to it. Brock Besser has woken up, turning into the uh, turning into the beast that we need him to be—a conqueror, perhaps. Three-one Blue Jackets, despite being outshot twenty-four to nineteen. Oh boy, third period. This is this. Oh, this is scary. Early power play for the Devils is killed off. We need to win this. We need to defend home ice. We have a power play opportunity here that we cannot score on. We're halfway through the third. They pulled off one upset so they could do it again, but Casey Middlestott makes it four, and that should do it. Four minutes to go, and the Columbus Blue Jackets have successfully defended home ice to begin this series. Brady Kachuk and Casey Middlestott. I mean, that's our top line right there. That is our top line. Three points for Kachuk and Middlestadt. The two-point night for Brock Besser. I said the second line carried us in the first round. And so far, it's been the top line that has delivered. You look at the uh, the Besser goal in the second period. The Middlestadt goal in the third period. What a way. What a way to start this series off. 2 nothing lead in this series. You know what they say, though. You're not in trouble until you lose on the road. 
or until you lose at home. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know what they say uh, when you completely butcher a saying and say the inverse of what you were supposed to say. You, you know what they say. I'm not going to say that the World Cup isn't on in the background. It might be on in the background. We're up two games to zero. A win here would be gigantic, obviously. The Devils, though, aren't in that big of trouble yet. We have seen comebacks happen time and time again. Our team stays the same. Let's see what we can do here in Game 3. First period, and for the first time, we don't have three goals. It's just the one from Morgan Klimchuk. 14 shots to 9 in their favor and a 1-0 lead for the Devils at the end of the first period. Second period, can we get back into it? Morgan Klimchuk adds a second. Brady Kachuk, though, exactly 10 minutes later, gets it back. So as it stands, a two-goal effort from Morgan Klimchuk. Uh, Brady Kachuk, though, has us on the board. We have 24 shots in favor, or, you know, ahead of their 22, so it's pretty even. I'm still just so nervous. I don't know why. I do not know why. I just, I have a really bad feeling about this despite the 2-0 series lead. Third period, though. Can this team put my concerns at ease? An early goal here would be nice to get us back in the game. We have a power play opportunity that we cannot take advantage of. We have another one, though. Please? Maybe? No. Okay. Nine minutes to go. We might have to look at changing up the power play. Five minutes to go. Is Klimchuk's goal... His second of the night going to hold up as the winner. Yes, it is. Wow. So Morgan Klimchuk, not exactly the hero that you would have expected. He steps up. Ryan McLeod with two assists, but the 31 save effort from Sergei Bobrovsky is enough to get the Devils back into this series. And that is what I was worried about as the home team has yet to lose a game. And I think I am going to change up the power play. Let's do that now if this uh, menu system wants to work properly. Thank you very much. I think the main thing that we're going to want to change here... I mean, Kachuk has 8 points. Middlestad has 8. 5 for Besser. Wallstrom a 7. You know what? I'm going to do something crazy. I'm just going to swap Besser and Wallstrom. Just to give the teams... You know, just to give the lines a little bit of a different look. I think defensively, I could move out Carrick. I mean, yeah, he's not that much of a point getter. Uh, would make more sense to have Fitzgerald there, I do suppose. I don't know why it showed me Brady Kachuk's points, but that's okay. We've changed up the power play a little bit. And we'll see if that can lead to a bit more success. Of course, it's not a true indication of how successful our power play's been. I'm just judging it off of the third period. But still, it's it's a little bit concerning to have seen us waste so many power play opportunities. That is the only change we're going to make for now. If we win this game, we're all good. If we lose this game... We might have to look at making other changes, but let's hope that's not the case. It's game four in New Jersey. Can we take that 3-1 series lead, or will the home team win all four games to start this series? Let's go. First period, and it's a goal apiece. Morgan Klimchuk, oh my god. Three straight goals for the Devils. Brady Kachuk gets us back on the board, though. So Brady has our last two. Morgan Klimchuk has their last three. It's Kachuk versus Klimchuk. Second period, and Ryan Paling finally breaks that competition down. We have a 2-1 lead. They were out shooting us, I do believe, at the end of the first period, but we're now out shooting them 17-15, to and we are potentially 20 minutes away, again, from breaking that run of home teams winning and from taking that commanding 3-1 series lead. Can we do it? Let's find out. And Nick Cardile scores just over three minutes into the period. Not what we wanted to see. We are all tied up here. 11 minutes remaining in the third. Are we destined for overtime in the first time in the series? Or will there be a late game winner? The next goal is going to win it. And it is, in fact, overtime. What a moment for this team. What a moment for not only this playoff series, but the series in general this is huge. Either we're going back home with a chance to end the series, or we are going back home for what might as well be the start of a best of three. Let's go. The overtime challenge. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Frederick or Donato. Let's do it. 
Come on, Trent, we need you. Please, early power play chance for the Devils is killed off. We have one of our own. But then again, we cannot score on. So frustrating. The Devils have another power play. Can we kill that off? No. We cannot. <laughs> I was right. I've never been so upset to be right. Ryan Donato gets the overtime winner on the power play. Sergei Bobrovsky, a monster on home ice. And it is now a best of three. This series is all tied up at two games apiece. You see the penalty. It was a double minor high sticking call on Ryan Fitzgerald. That cost us. And we have thrown away a 2-0 series lead, which is why I try not to get too excited about a 2-0 series lead, because anything can, in fact, happen. Let's go defense in the W. Oh, boy. That's a heartbreaker. That really is. We had such a good opportunity that has completely gone to waste. Uh, Dylan Larkin doesn't have a point, does he? He had 10 points coming into this. I don't think he's done anything in this series. He hasn't. So that second line is really quieted down. Let's take a look. The third line's okay. Still not much, though, from Frederick in terms of point production. And plus-minus-wise, really nothing from Fitzgerald. You know, I had a contingency plan. And I think I'm going to use it. I'm not sure how well this is going to work out, but I'm willing to give it a try. Fitzgerald's getting dropped. It might not be the guy you expect me to call up, but it is going to be Rintoul. I don't know what to expect from him. Um, does Fitzgerald have PK time? Three-man PK. Okay, so we'll have Paling, uh, and we'll have Middlestot there. That makes sense. And then the only other line errors from the normal line. What I'm going to do is we are going to bring in Rintoul. I had him set to a grinder. <laughs> I'm going to drop Frederick down to third line center. Rintoul's an interesting one. It's that 91 offensive awareness that really intrigues me. I'm going to swap him with Kevin LeBanc. Now, LeBanc hasn't been amazing this postseason, but I am going to give him an opportunity to step it up. And that top line, I mean, Besser's done well, but I think we're also going to make that change of Wallstrom and Besser just to give these lines a little bit of a different look. Although Hughes and Larkin, who started off, this run, uh, this postseason on a great run, have been shut down so far in this series. And as far as what we're looking at here, so Carrick and Hughes is a money pairing. Grizzlick and Casey Fitzgerald is not working. The problem is, uh, if I move McAvoy to play with Grizzlick, I mean, yeah, that would be swapping offensive defenseman for offensive defenseman. <sighs> and then, I mean, our, our other call-up options, we do have defensive call-up options. Uh, Gildan, Sealer... Sealer's just more of a straight defensive D. Gilden could be more of a two-way. If we wanted to change him, Lindgren's there. Samuelson. We do have options. You know what? I think I'm going to go McAvoy, Grizzlick, Warensky, Fitzgerald, and we're just going to see how it works. We'll give it a game. If it turns out to be a bit of a disaster, we'll have to make other call-ups. Ottinger's been okay, but we need him to be better. Overall, we'll see how this works. And then power play-wise, I'm going to make that change as well. Hughes, McAvoy, Wierenski, and Casey Fitzgerald. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure how well it will work out. We're just trying to find whatever, you know, whatever combination we can to try and spark some extra scoring from the bottom six and to try and spark some scoring really from the top six. I mean, at least on the road, we struggled. We only put up three goals. We went from scoring eight goals in two games to just three we are back on home ice, and needless to say, the pressure is on here. We had the ability to potentially win this series. I mean, we had a 2-0 series lead. Why does it keep saying Sim up today? God damn it, EA. Like, really? Really? It's already on the day, and you're like, oh, you want to Sim up to the day? It's I'm already on the day. How is it? How am I? I almost dropped my controller again. How is it June, and I'm finding new glitches with this game? That is some talent, let me tell you. Simulate game. Let's go. Game five. Now I'm afraid that we're going to be the team to snap that streak of being the first team in the series to lose on home ice. First period of game five is scoreless. That's an interesting change, and if anything, we're lucky that that was the case. They outshot us 14-8. to 
second period, and Claude Giroux has the lone goal of this game, and now I am beyond nervous. 21 shots to 19, and we are down one to nothing. The third period begins. We need somebody to step up. We have to get to Sergei Bobrovsky. A power play chance here for the Devils and Morgan Klimchuk. We're going to get kicked out of the playoffs by Morgan Klimchuk at this rate. Another power play for the Devils. It's a five on three. We kill that off. But Sergei Bobrovsky has found his form. And we have just dropped three straight games. <sighs> Man, Doogie, you didn't sound too excited after taking that 2 nothing series lead. Well, you know, because this has happened far too many times and I don't like looking foolish. Oh, God. Right. Indeed, we are the first team to lose a game on home ice. And we are now perhaps 60 minutes away from being eliminated. And I don't know what to do to try and spark this team. <sighs> Rintoul didn't really have an effect. I don't really know how much LeBanc did. God, what do we want to do here? I gotta be honest, it's a bit of a risk, but I think I'm going to go for the, like, the full kind of overhaul. I don't really like Fitzgerald. I don't really like Grizzlick. I think I'm gonna drop both from the team. And offensively... I'm not sure either. So Grizzly and Fitzgerald. I want a lefty and a righty. The only righty is Benton Moss, so I'm going to do it. The question is forward-wise. Um, I like the defense from Samuelson, but the offensive awareness is a bit weak. Lindgren, there is no offensive awareness. He's a bit more physical, though. Uh, Gildan, kind of a best-of-both-worlds situation. Gildan's probably the most well-rounded. Let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance, and then forward-wise, I am going to drop Rintoul. I know he wasn't necessarily bad in that series, but I am going to drop him. And to be honest, uh, Kevin LeBanc hasn't exactly uh, shown in this postseason so far. So we give him Fitzgerald a chance. We haven't given Bertuzzi a chance. Norris was dropped. I'm, I might give Norris a chance, too. I mean, Faraby didn't do too terribly once we called him back up. I think I might drop Kevin LeBanc. So it comes down to Bertuzzi, Ernie, or McInnes. I mean, McInnes, not that great defensively, a little bit physical. The offense is a bit weak. Uh, Adam Ernie is quite well-rounded. And Bertuzzi, in the 80 offensive awareness, I'm not sure why he's a playmaker, really. Probably rather have him as a two-way. You know, let's go with the guy that we drafted. Let's go with Bertuzzi. And I'm going to have to make more changes than this, I'm sure. But still, just it sucks that it has to come down to this, but our back is against the wall for this next game. And i got to be honest, I mean, JD didn't do much on the third line, which is why we dropped him in the first place. Do I want to call up? I mean, I want Faraby there. Paling is not much of a point getter, but he's doing all right. Um, Frederick Norris or Greenway? You know, where do I give Johnny Bertuzzi? Who plays on the third line is my question. That's the decision that I'm trying to make. And I'm not sure what I want to do. I mean, Brady Kachuk, nine points, eight points for Middlestat, only the five for Besser. Larkin's been dead quiet. We have to break him and Hughes up. But I don't want to break up Middlestat and Kachuk because they've been okay. But it could work. It could work to just completely change this out. So, man, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do. I think I want to give Jordan Greenway a little bit more of an opportunity. Let's see. So, in terms of centers, I'm just, I'm not sure who we can drop. I had to say, anybody in that top six, I don't necessarily want to drop out of the top six. They do give us the best chance to win. But, yeah, I don't know. Larkin, Middlestat, Besser, Kachuk, Hughes, and Wallstrom. That's a combo we haven't tried yet. And I think I'm willing to do it. Farabee, Paling, and Greenway. Who's the best center on this line? It is uh, by far Trent Frederick. Paling's also had an 88 faceoffs. Uh, so yeah, we'll have Bertuzzi on the left, Frederick and Norris, Farabee, Paling, Greenway. I'm going to see how that works. 
Um, I might and actually probably will change up some player types, so give me a moment to do so. All right, so the lineup is set. Not much has changed aside from moving Greenway to like a right wing and a two-way forward, that kind of move. Uh, Josh Norris changing him to a right wing. Frederick and Bertuzzi have both been changed to grinders. I mean, they're playing the fourth line. That's kind of the role that we want them to play. The third line is all two-line players. We're just, I mean, we're throwing anything we can at the wall to see what sticks. I am going to have Gilded and Moss be the third pairing as opposed to putting one with Wierenski and one with McAvoy. Not sure how well that will work. The power play and the PK, I have left it up to EA and what they think is the best way to go. Why not? It might bring us a little bit of good luck and fortune. Or we could instead get absolutely killed here. But really, I mean, if you look at it, we went from scoring eight goals in the first two games to, uh, yeah, <laughs> having three goals in the last three. So... I am uh, I am quite concerned, to say the least, but we will see what happens. It's doing that stupid glitch again where it's like, oh, you gotta send to the day. I'm already on the day. What the hell? I just like to go through the calendar for whatever reason, but screw it, whatever. We'll go from the main menu. Let's do it. Game six, Blue Jackets and Devils. Either we hand them their first loss on home ice in this series, or our season will come to an end. So let's do this. First period of game six, and it's scoreless. We outshot them, but the fact that we still haven't put up a goal on Sergei Bobrovsky in at least the past four periods is quite concerning, to say the least. Second period. Oh my god, two goals for Kevin Hayes. Just minutes apart. We are down 2 nothing heading into the third period. This team looks so good. In round one, we looked so good in game two, and I don't know if we just lost, like, just, uh, what happened? Like, what happened after game two? Casey Middlestad at least gets us in this game, so we've found a way to beat Bobrovsky. Dylan Larkin tied it. Right. I'm I, I'm not falling for this, EA. No false optimism for me. I was scared heading into this episode. I started to get a little bit more confidence back in, uh, you know, in the first two games. And now I refuse to be optimistic until the final whistle, and there is the final whistle. Thank God. Oh my God, right. Third period comeback, Middlestot, Larkin, and of all people, to score the game winner to force a game seven, it's Josh Norris who was put back into this lineup as well. The, the, just the way it paid off for us to put Faraby and Norris back in, and they both score immediately. Middlestot and Larkin getting it done. A third period comeback from 2 nothing down. We win this one 3-2 and have forced Game 7 back on home ice. I refused to have any sort of optimism. Outright refused. Maybe that paid off. Like I was saying, I started off this episode feeling optimistic, but a little bit scared that it could come crashing down and hurt inside. Gotta be a man. Real American. Um, <laughs> and obviously with the first two games... Even after winning those, I said I was scared, and that's why, and our worst fear almost came to pass. But we have forced Game 7. Larkin gets back on the board. His first impact in the series. <sighs> game 7. Lovely. We will keep the team the same. We'll keep the lineup the same. Let's do this. Game 7. The winner goes to the Eastern Conference Final. Will it be the Devils, or will it be the Blue Jackets? Let's find out. First period of Game 7 is scoreless. Right. Second period is very much not scoreless. In under a minute, Casey Middlestott and Jack Hughes gave us a 2-0 lead that held for the last 14-51 of the second period, 21 shots to 16 in our favor, but I cannot be overly optimistic because the Devils blew a 2-0 lead in the third period of the last game, and that's why we're here. It comes down to this, 20 minutes away from either a collapse in the end of our season, a collapse in overtime, or 20 minutes away from punching our ticket to the conference 
final. The goals from Middlestadt and Hughes, will those stand? <sighs> God, let's go. <laughs> Early power play here for the Devils. That is killed off. And then the Mesnikov gets the goal. Had a feeling. Again, didn't get overly optimistic about it. I'm trying to keep my expectations in check. Six minutes to go. I am not feeling very good. Oh my god, and that's why. Ryan McLeod, we're going to overtime. I tried to pause the simulation to jump into the last two minutes. And now, instead, the simulation's paused. Because we're going to overtime in Game 7. Back-to-back -back games, a team has blown a 2-0 lead in the third period. And that brings us to this. I'm just going to go five-minute periods. It really doesn't make a difference. That brings us to this moment. Overtime of Game 7. Arguably the biggest game. The biggest few seconds, moments, minutes in this series so far. Oh, God. Middlestadt and Giroux are out for the faceoff. We're still on true broadcast. I'm going to leave it, I guess. I don't know. What do you guys think for these overtime situations as we go offside immediately? What do you guys think for these overtime situations? Do we just stay on classic or do we go for the true broadcast camp? I never quite know what to go with. Donato, Giroux, Sprong, Larkin, Middlestadt, and Besser. So much pressure here to get the job done. We talked about their defense. Claude Giroux through the neutral zone. Looking for space. Finds Donato, and he scores! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I knew it. I called it roughly half an hour ago. I said that that might happen. <laughs> and it did. Ryan Donato has ended our season. Just seconds into overtime. I cannot believe what I just saw. I just, just, wow. I, <laughs> I got nothing here, guys. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to do. For all the people who are like, wow, you're, you're way too specific with where you trade. Who cares if you trade within the Eastern Conference every now and then? That's why I don't. Because in this video game, you don't have to worry about being made a fool of like Pierre Dorian and having the Western Conference team immediately trade the player back to the East. Ryan Donato just ended our season. A 2-0 series lead blown, and we lose in overtime in Game 7 on home ice to a player we just traded at the deadline. This team might be cursed. This franchise mode type might be cursed. I just... I got nothing to say, guys. We'll pick it back up in the next one. With the draft and maybe the entire offseason, I'm not quite sure. If you care to support the channel and the video, I do appreciate it. As all YouTubers say, leave a like, subscribe, and click the bell. Let's get a 10-bell salute for your Columbus Blue Jackets. Links are in the description of my Twitter and Twitch. And until next time... Oh, by the way... Yeah, no, I'll talk about it in a different video. It's fine. It's nothing important. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. <sighs> I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep now, and I'm not even tired.